Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, Good sir. Good afternoon, sir. All right. The, I'm waiting until the other students, about two more minutes for the other students to join the room, all right? Sir Gabriel Janine says she's in the waiting room. I'm accepting everyone right now. Do you guys have a WhatsApp group? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the so could you okay. admit to your wait, your WhatsApp group is for your form class or your WhatsApp group is for your history class? Mm. Our form class. It's a form class WhatsApp group. All your teachers are. There we have group. different groups. Yes, sir. But someone can make a new one. Okay. All right. We'll discuss that later on. And you are seeing the screen, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so we have the majority of the class. Now it's, we have 28 students. And I believe the class is 35. One more student is here. Excellent. All right, ladies, so we're going to, we're going to begin. So, I am O'Neill Hall. I will be teaching you history, grade nine history with Mrs. Karen Brown Chambers. And so I will, both of us will be teaching your class. I hope it will be a very good experience having two teachers. So what we're going to do now is that I'm going to go through today's lesson because today what we're going to do, we're going to look at historical thinking skills. We're going to look at historical thinking skills, all right? So the objectives for today's class and objectives, when we talk about the objective for the class, what we intend to learn today or what we intend to cover during the period. And so our first objective at the end of this class, ladies, at the, at the end of this class, you should know what is history, how historians construct history, and apply historical thinking skills to a recent event. All right? So these are our three objects objectives. Ensure that you're writing. 
ensure that you are writing. Ladies, in fact, scholars in education, I'm coming, Louis. Taylor, one second. Uh, scholars in education point out that when students actually write, they tend to remember the majority of what was taught. All right? Yes, Kayla? You can Sarah, go ahead. Sarah, I was going to ask if we're going to be writing, but you already said that. So, yeah. Okay, good. And Gabriel? Yes, sir. Um, I was asking, I mean, asking, I was telling that I just made a history group and whoever is not in it, can you just like message me? Thanks. All right, so you can admit group, Gabriel. You have history so, Gabriel, I'm going to send you my number in the chat, right? So just okay, look in the see. chat and you'll see my number. You can add me to it and then Miss Brown Chambers. When you... That's my number. You can add me to it to that. All right, ladies, we have a lot to cover, and I want to, this class to be very exciting. So we are going to start, right? All right. So these are our main objectives for today. What is history? How historians reconstruct history and apply historical thinking skills to a recent event. Now, in your notebooks, you're going to put what is history, and you're going to put your own definition of history. What do you think history is in your notebook? So for two, two minutes, two minutes, ladies, two minutes, what is history? Your own definition of history. When you hear the word history, what comes to mind? When you hear the word history, what comes to mind? Ladies, when you hear the word history, what comes to mind? There's a student that... One, one second, please. There's a student... Sir? Okay, Brianna. I can see I've seen the message. The, there's a student by the name of... That signed on, okay, renators. There's a student by the name of Marshall Bean. She's trying to get into the room, but it seems as if she has some issues getting on. I've accepted her about five times now, and she's still, I'm not sure. So ladies, what you're doing, what is history? When you hear the word history, what comes? Sir, artifacts. All right, so writing facts, so that is one. Uh, let I look, Shaw, Abigail Shaw. Yes, sir. When you hear the word history, what comes to mind? So writing facts, is, it's correct, yes? Um, the past. 
So the, uh, one of the big words that jump out at you when you hear the word history is the past. Good. All right. Weber, Annalisa Weber. Yes, sir. When you hear the word history, it comes to mind. Um, sir, a lot of writing. So, a lot of writing, correct, yes, a lot of writing. Anybody else want to break the, the, the ice or burst the bubble? When it, what comes to mind? Culture. Repeat. Culture. Yes. Culture. Anyone else? The recorded past. Record the past. Yes. So th these are some of the things that come to mind when we talk about history. Now, I am going to... There's one thing that we need to know, ladies, is that history is more than knowing the past. History is more than knowing the past. So that's our first thing. History is more than knowing the past. So while history is studying about the past, you're studying about the past, history is more than just studying about the past. In fact, ladies, history is very different from storytelling. A lot of us tell stories at times, and some stories have historical links to some of the stories that we have heard. In fact, some of the story in Africa, one way in which people actually tell the history is through I've stories. Yes, Kira, you can, Kira, you can make a point. You were making a point just now? Um, okay. you know history by, by telling stories to the younger generation. Yes, to the younger generation. Very, very popular way of how the, how in Africa, history is actually told to, to the people there. So in Africa, people tell a lot about the past, even within your own families. You know, your family story and what happened in the past in your family based on somebody telling you a story about it, correct? Yes, sir. For example, let, let us use another one. Uh, your, anyone was actually born after their parents got married. Anyone here? Hi, me, me, sir. Me, me too. All right. So one of at Simon, Simon. Yes, what, sir. Yes, I want to ask you. So you were born. You were born. What what the question I asked? If you were born after. Your parents got, yes. So after your parents got married. No, so if you were born after your parents got married, that means you had no idea what their wedding day was like, correct? Yes, sir. And so you know about their wedding day, their wedding day, your mom and your father wedding day. Tell me how you know about it. What, how you, you, you have had an image of, of your parents' wedding day. Um, pictures around the house. Pictures, yes, pictures. Pictures. So pictures also give you an idea of what happened on that day. Yes. What else? Um, a lot of people told me about it in my family. People in your family actually inform me about what happened. Excellent point. Thank you very much, Les Marie. Bless Marie. Yes, sir. Yes, you raised your hand. There was an accident. Okay, all right, no problem. 
so you realize that Simon, that you you knew about these events, your parents were on day based on the fact that somebody would have told you about it. But history is more than just somebody telling you a story. In fact, a definition of history is that history is those events. So underline the word events. History is those events that impact impacted the life of people of that time. So history is those events that had an impact on people during a specific time. And how those events significantly influence human development. And how those events significantly influence human development. So in other words, history is talking about people, time, events, and how those events that people were involved in during a specific time influence their development. Repeat, history is about events, people, because without people, you cannot have an event. So history is about people, events, time, and how those events that people were involved in during a specific time influence their development. History. Now the next thing is that history is about interpreting the past and interpretation of the past. It's not just mere telling the past, but you're interpreting the past by asking some specific questions. And so if you are asking some questions, and as a historian or our students of history, you're going to ask certain questions. You're going to ask what happened, when it happened, where it happened, how it happened, and also why it happened. OK? I, so whenever you're going to write, whenever you're going to write your papers, whenever you're answering a question in history class, whenever you go to the exam or doing a test and they ask you to describe the, they ask you what is World War, to describe the causes of the Second World War. You can't just say the Second World War is countries fighting against each other. You need to tell the, your examiner what? So what the event was, so that we know the event was the Second World War. When it happened, where it happened, if it happened in in one location or more than one location, how it happened, how did they go about fighting, what were the methods they used fighting, why, why are they fighting, all right? So you need to ask these very key questions and ensure, ladies, you, are, you put an asterisk on these key questions that historians ask. Sir, are you going to send us the PowerPoint? You will have the recording. I'll send the recording in the group, the Google Classroom. But it's also important to write. I am writing. I'm just lost because Zoom doesn't really work, so it keeps on freezing all the time, and I get disconnected. So okay. So Sorry about the, we know the, it's the internet issue. 
all right? Because it just shows that my internet connection is unstable. And I've had the internet problem from since then, all right? So let us bear with it, all right? So as historians, ladies, we're going to ask these questions, what, when, where, how, and why? So for the next five minutes, you're going to use your devices and you're going to answer, define these terms. 10 minutes, sorry, 10 minutes. 10 minutes to define these terms. Objectivity, validity, reliability, em 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 empathy, or to empathize. So please, ladies, define these terms. 10 minutes, and then we're going to continue our discussion. Yes, Grant? Excuse me, sir, will this be posted in the Google Classroom, the slide? The, uh, yes, I will send everything in the Google Classroom. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you.
Ladies, just raise your hands when you're through, all right? Sir? Yes, I'm here. Do we have a discussion of these activities? Yes, we are. Yes, we're going to have a discussion. Okay.
All right, ladies. So we're going to have our discussion. All right. From your definition of objectivity, what is objectivity? Sir, objectivity yes. is closely related to the value of judgment. It, the value of judgment. Okay. All right. That's a good answer. Um, sir. Yes. Go ahead. Lack of favoritism towards one side or another. The lack of favoritism. All right. And if you tend to, I want to ask uh, Gabriel. Gabriel? Gabriel? Okay. Friendly gas, friendly gas. So, friend, I guess you are not in the class. Simons? Yes, sir. All right, Simons. All right, so when we so we just look at the word objectivity and one of those classmates said lack of favoritism so if you are showing favoritism then you are considered to be what uh, um objective bias bias you're, 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 yes so you are very correct bias so if you are showing favoritism then you are considered to be biased. And so objectivity is when you show no favoritism, you tell the plain truth based on the facts. All right? So that is our concept of objectivity. So, as historians, historians make historical statements. So historians, they actually make historical statements. And these statements, and these historical statements, they must be valid, reliable, and objective, right? In fact, so, so one, one of the first things that we would have noticed is the objectivity, is that it should not be show any form of bias, show no form of favor. Validity. What is validity? So if a historical statement must be objective, it should not show any bias. Uh, Go ahead. Validity is the extent to which a concept is well founded and likely corresponds accurately to the real world. Oh, it must be well founded. Anyone else have a ver another definition? It's well founded. Continue. The extent to which our concept, conclusion, or measurement is well founded and likely corresponds accurately to the real world. The real world. No. Yeah. So in other words, when somebody says that something in, is valid or the validity of a statement, it must be based on evidence. You must have evidence to, to, to back up what you're saying. So one is that historical statements must be valid. They must also be objective but they also must be reliable. What do we mean by re re reliability? They must be true. 
true? Yes, it must be true. So one, validity, it must be based on facts. Reliability, okay. it must be, one second, reliability, it must be true. And objectivity means that it should show no form of bias. Because in reality, we can have a very, we can have the facts, but we can also be biased. So historical statements must be valid, reliable, and objective. Yes, the student who has a point. Yes, sir. Um, reliability, they said, it's a source evaluation skill which asks you to draw a conclusion about the trustworthiness of a source. Yes, which the trustworthiness also speaks to the true of the source, whether it is true or not. All right? And okay. so, so thank you very much for that point, because that's the exact definition I have. No, so historical statements must be valid, reliable, and objective. The next thing, ladies, is that as historians or students of history, we retell the events in such a way as to enable us to empathize with the events and the conditions of the past. And what it means to empathize or to show empathy. Empathy is the process that leads to the understanding and an explanation of why people acted this way in the past. All right, very good. So when we show empathy to something, or we are showing empathy, we are understanding what happened, how the people relate to that event, how, how we can there understand. In, yes, continue. It also involves an appreciation of historical context and chronology in the evaluation of past events. Very good. All right. So, uh, so when we make historical statements, it must be valid, reliable, objective. But also, we must, uh, as students of history, we must also show some level of empathy. All right. So when we are talking about historical skills, writing or studying history, these are some of the skills that we need to have as historians. All right. The next thing is that when we're looking Sir, at wait, can I can I see what the last part of the before slide says, please? This one? Yes, sir. Let me know when you are through. Okay, sir, we can go. All right. So there are some other things that we need to, if there are some other things. When historians are looking at events, all right? Historians tend to ask these questions. We know for sure the what, when, how, and why. But we can break those questions down into looking at Cause and effects, change and continuity. All right. So, if whatever event happen, if if for example there's something significantly that happened at a particular time, we need to ask ourselves the cause of the event, why it happened, the effects that it have on the people. Because remember, history is talking about people. What happened? All right, which is the event? What is the cause? What were the causes of past events? What were the effects? Who or what made the change happen? Who supported the change? Who did not support the change? Who, who did not support the change? 
And so these are some of the questions that we ask as historians, cause and effect. And most of the questions that you will get in history is going to look at cause, the, the causes of an event, and the effects. Effects, another word for effects, the consequences. What are the cause? What are the effects? And when an event happens, usually when an event happens, there's usually change. Usually there's change. Not all the time there is change when an event happens. All right? And so if there is... So we need to ask ourselves, what has changed? What has remained the same? And it's not everything based, based on a historical event that happened. Not everything is going to change. Some things are going to remain the same. So for example, if you ask, some, if we could look at the indigenous people in the Caribbean, for example, the, the, the Taino or Taino, we know for sure that in the 1500s, right in Jamaica, indigenous people lived here. They settled here, they had their home, they had their communities, they had their society. All right? The Taino lived here. Now, something would have happened that would have caused them not to no longer be around. So we need to ask what what led to what led to the fact that today in Jamaica there's no Taino living. So we white. need to ask, yes, go ahead. The white people. They came so, and they killed them and infected them with diseases. So so Europeans, right? So Europeans came colonized this area, very good. And so that is the cause. And you, another cause that you'd have mentioned is the, Infected. that they would have, they died because of diseases. One. Yes. Someone else has I a point. I still can't ever understand how they said the Europeans discovered Jamaica when they came here and saw people. Repeat. Repeat the question. I was saying that I still couldn't understand how they said the Europeans destroyed Jamaica and they killed hands of people. All right. Very good point. Because you cannot discover somewhere that is already discovered. So Europeans did not discover Jamaica. All right? They came to the Americas. Repeat. We still marking it. We still have that information in our textbooks and the ones that have been made. And I guess that's in the CXC ones as well, since that's no. what I mean. In CXC, for CXC, when you do CXC next year, you will know that Christopher Columbus did not discover. And I, ex in fact, I'm not expecting teachers to be teaching today that Christopher Columbus discovered it. Christopher Columbus did not discover them. Christopher Columbus accidentally came to the Caribbean. And when he came here, he saw indigenous people living in the Caribbean. He did not discover. And you are correct. And these are some of the questions that I, I, you should ask as historian. You don't take this, you don't take the statement just like that, and say, okay, he discovered. No, he did not, because you need to ask yourself, then if he discovered Jamaica, why is it people were actually here before he came? He didn't discover. He made the Americas or Jamaica be known to people in Europe. He made them aware of the, this region, but he didn't discover, all right? So the cause of, excellent point. So the cause of the event, the effects of the event, change. Any change happen as a result of the indigenous people dying? 
yes. Yes, sir. What are some of the changes? Oh, sir, other people came and told us. Sir, when and they eventually got analyzed. Colonized as well. So other people came. Other Don't groups. Know that's it, that's it. Very good. Anything that would have remained from the indigenous people? Wait, sir, I was... Okay. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I was saying, because the European, they started out slavery with the um, Tainos. When they died out, they didn't have anyone else to work on the farm. So as a result, they had to take people from Africa. Very good. Died. Excellent point. Excellent point. Anything remain the same? Um, Is there any legacy from the indigenous that any legacy of the indigenous um, people today? Sir, like the food that they cooked. The yes. food, excellent. Some of the food. Pepper Give pot. me some examples of the food. Pepper pot. Pepper pot. What and else? And roast corn. Roast corn. What else? Um, the thing with cassavas. Cassava. Anything with cassava came from them, what they call bami. Uh, what else came from the indigenous people? Every Friday, please, most Jamaicans eat this type of food. Soup? Not, well, soup, they did pepper pot, which is a type of soup. It's, are you sell on the roadside? Jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. So it is, it is it's jerk chicken, but they didn't jerk chicken, but the way of cooking jerk. Oh, over the coal? Over, oh. the, over the wood. Oh. They came up with the idea of jerking the indigenous people. And so they would have jerked different things there. All right. Another thing is that there are some words that still remain from the indigenous people like hurricane. Hurricanes and I didn't know. Hurricane, the word hurricane is a word from the indigenous people, from the Taino. It's same thing like the word in some country, names of countries have indigenous names, for example, like Haiti. Oh. Haiti is an indigenous word that actually means land of hills. Oh, wow. Yes. Same thing with we kind of anglo size Jamaica, but the indigenous word for Jamaica was Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And so we still have some things that continues, even though there was a genocide, there was a drastic change. All right? So ladies, there are some of the other things of turning points. What were some of the turning points in history? How did past decision or action affect the future? So we know for sure one of the main turning points when it comes to the indigenous people is that they are the indigenous people, no, no indigenous people live in Jamaica, but guess what? There are some of their traditions, their words, their culture that still continues. For example, like when you go on the beach and you lie down on this, yeah. what do you use? What do you lie down on, on the beach? Town, the beach towels? Beach chairs. No, beach. not the beach chairs. When What's you tie it onto the hammock, yes. It's the indigenous people that came up with hammock. Yes. Yeah. Any fish? Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the indigenous people, not only the hammock that they would have, the indigenous people would have used, right? But the indigenous people, all of these things were. You know all the craft, the beads, baskets, baskets. Yes, all of those things are from the indigenous people. Smoking came from the indigenous people. The Europeans came here and saw the indigenous people using tobacco. They were the first to use tobacco, and today that continues today. So, what are some of the turning points? And so. How does the past help us to make sense of the present? So based on what I have just said, you can now understand why the present is like what it is today. Yes. I 
that way? Yes. And we can, how did the people in the past view the world? So guess what? You are not going to say that the indigenous people were uncivilized because you have laptops today. You have to view the world based on how people live within a specific time. So you don't cast judgment. You understand the event based on the specific time that people would have lived. So these are some of the skills that we're going to take, we're going to move along with as we study history in grade nine. Now, what are some of the values of history? So I'm going to the values of history. One of the main values of history is that it provides entertainment. What do I mean by entertainment? So when people hear the different things that happened in the past, they um, are entertained by it because it's interesting. It is interesting, lovely. Yes, next point. Next student. There we name it. Yes, continue. All right, so history provides entertainment. You're interested in what happened in the past. As human beings, we have a curiosity to know what happened. Deep down, we are naturally inquisitive. In other words, if we want to use our Jamaican colloquial term, we pass. We always want to know what happened. So history provides entertainment. History also provides personal identity. We want to know who we are, what are our family history, why this person is related. Tickling. Your point. Pardon me? You raised your hand just now. Oh, no, I just put it down. Okay. So, personal identity. Who are your family members? It also provides national and collective identity. In Jamaica, majority of us are from which race? African, wait, no, black. 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 Africans. We are? We are? Black. All of us are from the African race, <laughs> all right? And so if we are majority, we are descendants of black people, then history, provide some level of national and collective identity. So not only is black people in Jamaica, it provides an history provides an identity for black people in Jamaica, people of African descent in Jamaica, but also people in Barbados, Grenada, the United States of America, Canada, anywhere black people live in Africa, there's this collective identity. Same for people who are of Chinese descent. History provides some form of collective identity. Explain why things are how it is today. And when we have some very important historical events that is taking place, or social or political events, for example, like Black Lives Matter, in the United States. History provides a justification for why is it in 2020, there is a movement in the United States about Black Lives Matter. Sure. History also, yes, go ahead. Oh, so I think like after the- um, One second, you're going to answer the question about Black Lives Matter? Yes, sir. Don't answer because that's going to be an activity. Oh, sorry. All right. So keep, keep it together. Very good. The next thing, ladies, is that history, another value of history is commercial value. What do I mean by commercial value? Oh, sorry. People make money off of it. People make money from history, but guess what? Yeah, A lot of companies use history so if you check go into your cupboard right now or your pantry and if you look on this sardine you see grace kennedy quality since 1922 
Grace is telling you that, listen, I am around long time, so don't bother with Lasco or any other brand because we are, we are in this thing for a long time. We have been serving generation upon generation. Oh. Same thing for your school. Yeah. On, Monday, on Monday, your school is celebrating how many years? 95. 95 years. 95. And do you realize that is a big thing because it is showing the history, the, oh, history, the value of the school. And so there's going to be a lot of celebration. And people are going to say, listen, we are not a school that just came about. We have a tradition of excellence. Are we seeing some of the values of history? Another value of history is that it makes project projection about the future. I'm going to give you an example. Recently, we had an election. And people could determine certain oh. political seats that were going to, that political party is going to win based on the historical fact that people within a particular area always vote for a, a, a particular political um, And so they yes. also like made a prediction of who they were going to vote on based on what that party did in the past when they were in power. Very good, very good. No, and you're very correct. No, ladies, the... So what we're going to do is that as historians, you use all these questions that you ask that I would have mentioned, the what, the when, the how, the why, the causes, the effects, the change, the continuity to reconstruct history. So by reconstructing history, you are interpreting the history through answering questions are writing essays or doing a multiple choice question. That's how you reconstruct history, by interpreting the past. And you interpret the past by asking some very important questions. Now look at this activity, activity number one. Look at the, this, the protest that is taking place. And now what I'm going to ask you to do for two minutes, and no time has expired, for two minutes, study this picture, and you're going to apply your historical skills to explain this event to us. In our books, sir. In your books. in your books. So you're going to use the historical skills to explain this event to a friend. And what is the event about? Black Lives Matter. Very good. Now, because time has expired on us, ladies, what we're going to do when we... Leave it in your book. I know on Tuesday you're going to meet Mrs. Brown Chambers, but when we meet again for the other class, then I will pick up from here. Now, Mrs. Brown Chambers pointed out that there are three questions on historical thinking in the Google Classroom that you're supposed to answer. And also, you're going to, there's an, a handout on the Industrial Revolution, the handout on the Industrial Revolution, and she's asking you to make a glossary with the key terms. So read the, the handout and make a glossary of it. Sir. Repeat. So the first Sir. thing, one second please. The first thing that you're going to do you're going to complete this activity about the, with the picture of Black Lives Matter by applying historical skills to explain this event to a friend.
apply historical skills to explain this event to a friend. The event is Black Lives Matter. So that is one. Two, there are three questions on historical thinking in the Google Classroom. There are three questions on historical thinking in the Google Classroom. Um, okay, sir. Yes. So can you like repeat what reconstruction is because I never wrote it. One second, please. And the the next the next point, ladies, is on the screen now. The next point, the next activity is to read the handout on the Industrial Revolution. You're going to read the handout on the Industrial Revolution. And you're going to make a glossary with key terms. You're going to make a glossary with key terms. All right, ladies, that's it for today. We meet again for class on Tuesday with Mrs. With Mrs. Brown Chambers and on Friday with Mr. Hart. Sir, can you send um, the PowerPoint separate from the recording, please? I will send both the PowerPoint and the recording. Thank you. All right. Enjoy the rest of the day, ladies. Thank you, sir. Have Thank a great you. weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye, sir. Same to you. Bye.